Hi everyone, welcome in this new walkthrough tutorial. I don't know about you, but here at Minsar, we feel that the AR VR fashion sector is bubbling up. We can see more and more amazing projects that are trying to reinvent fashion and mix the endless possibilities of 3D creation with the sense of presence of the clothing itself. At Minsar, we've been working on this thematic for almost a year now, mostly with our friend and partner, the fashion designer Steven Pissarro, whose work we've presented numerous times. With Steven, we've been researching a way to make a bridge between Klo and Minsar, that is to say to export animated clothes and avatars from Klo into Minsar. Today, I'm presenting you the result of that research. So, there are certainly many ways to do what I'm about to show you in this tutorial, but this is basically a way that I found that makes a more or less direct pipeline between Clo 3D and Minsar. If you have other ideas, other tips or remarks, by all means, feel free to join us on Discord and share your thoughts there. They will be most welcome. In this tutorial, first, we'll see how to animate an avatar in Clo from Mixamo and simulate the clothes physics according to it. Then, we'll see how to export both the clothes and the avatar in Blender. In there, we'll be combining the two animations and then exporting them in GLB for Minsar. At last, I'll be showing you how to create your experience in Minsar and publish it. Clo themselves made nice tutorials about the animation between Clo and Mixamo, so you can also go and have a look at those. Actually, this very tutorial is greatly inspired from Clo's ones, but I had to change some little things in order to get exactly what I wanted. I suppose mainly because I worked on a newer version of the software. So first, we'll prepare the avatar. Indeed, you can't animate an avatar inside Clo, so we'll just have to export it, pass it through Mixamo to give it an animation, and then import it back into Clo. I'm going to assume for now that we want the avatar with its basic textures. To export it along with its texture, the best way I've found for now is to export it through GLB. And I'll just have you notice that for this tutorial, I'm on version 6.1.250. So, for starters, just for the time being, I'm going to delete the clothes, then go to File, Export, GLB. I'm, just gonna I'm not going to change any basic properties in the basic options, but I'm just going to make sure that under File section, the diffuse color is set to be combined on texture. Then I'm going to Blender and I'm importing my GLB. And here you can't see your model. It's maybe because it's too large. So you can go up to View and in the end clip, you can put something like 10,000, for example. Then once your model is selected, re-export it in FBX and make sure that you copy the textures inside the file and deactivate the bake animation uh, when you export it. Then inside Mixamo, you go to Upload Character and select the FBX you have just prepared in Blender. And then you just have to follow the instructions. All of this is very well explained in closed tutorials. Once this is done, even before putting an animation on it, you have to re-download the model as it is. So go to download and here under pose, you choose original pose FBX and you save it as something like T-Pose. You'll understand why later. Then I'm going to choose an animation to put on my model. So I'm going to put a walking cycle. I'm going to tweak it a little bit. Um, so here it's really at your own convenience, okay? I'm just going to make it walk in place for starters, not moving forward as we'll be doing that in Minsar. And I'm going to, you know, spread the arms a little bit far from the body so as to avoid any collision issues in the simulation of the clothes inside Clo. Then you go to download again and download as an FBX and you're going to name it something like Walking Mixamo in order to find it easily after. Then let's go back into Clo and let's start by importing the walking cycle that you have been doing in Mixamo. And first, I'm not going to change anything in the import options. I'm just going to hit OK. And here you might encounter a little bit of a problem, which is that the model is too large and you can't see it. If you have this, import your model again, but this time with a scale of 1%. And here you can see that, well, you can see your animation well played and it's in entirety. 
So first we are going to save this as a joint motion. Is as I've been doing this before, the joint motion file already exists in my video, but you'll have to create a new one. Once that's done, delete everything and open the project inside which there are the clothes that you want to simulate with the animation of Mixamo. Delete the original avatar and instead import the Tipo's avatar that we've been exporting for Mixamo, remember? And don't forget to put 1% in here as well. And um, at first you'll see that uh, it might not seem to fit very well with the cloth, but don't worry, it will come just after. Then open the joint motion on this, and here you are ready to simulate. But first, uh, don't forget to optimize your clothes, okay? Because especially with the particle distance, here I'm gonna put something like 40. And don't forget the top stitches as well, which are extremely heavy, they are exported in polygons, so either bake them into a normal or delete them. Then I'm going to go into the animation tab and I am going to start recording the animation. And you can see that as it is simulating, the clothing is re-encompassing the avatar and you can see that it is readjusting itself according to the avatar's body. So it looks much better and everything is falling into place as it's simulating. Once your animation is ready, you can play it again to control its quality and to observe any collision problems, for example, such as the arm catching into the clothes or anything like that. And if you are satisfied with it, well, I would think it's high time for you to save your project, right? Well, personally, I'm not doing that far often enough, so let's do that right now. Now, we have to observe the animation. Actually, we want to restrain the frames to movement that can be looped, preferably when the closed simulation has a stable enough pattern that can be repeated, for example, between two strides. In this case, it seems that there is a suitable loop between frame 42 and frame 74, so we'll have to keep that in mind. But for now, you know, I'm just going to extend the entire animation back to the entire frames of the animation, but again, I'll keep that in mind for the future. Okay, now it's time to export the clothing. We're going to export it in MDD, which is basically a table of vertices embedding the deformation of the mesh. So go to File, Export, MDD Cache. Leave the settings as they are, but just be sure to uh, export the entire animation and then hit OK. This will give you a zip file inside which you'll find two objects, an OBJ and an MDD file. The first one we want to import in Blender is the OBJ one. So in Blender, you go to import OBJ, choose your object and be sure to check keep vertices under the geometry tab. This is essential if you want this to work. Don't forget also to crank up the camera clipping in a bit uh, if you can't see your model. And then select your model and go to import MDD and choose the MDD that was in the archive. Once it's loaded, you should see the keyframes animation on the model itself. And once that's done, we're going to import the walking FBX that we have exported from Mixamo, remember? Then I'm going to select everything and just rescale them down so as to avoid any rendering glitches and so as to actually see what I'm doing. And now, well, Here's the trickiest part, because when you hit play, you will certainly see something like this. The avatar and the clothes seem not to be fitting at all, but don't panic, it's just a few things to adjust. So in this case, we are going to start working on the clothes itself, okay? First, we're going to rotate it 180 degrees on the Z axis. So let's do that. And then we are going to delete the first and the last keys because you can see that these two keys seem a little buggy, okay? They seem to have a wrong rotation, uh, so we're just going to delete them. And then we'll have to delete the first 29 frames of the animation of the cloth, which correspond to the moment where Clo is adapting the cloth to the avatar for the actual simulation, remember? It's the moment of transition between the T-pause and the walking cycle. So we're going to delete the first 29 frames, okay? Then we are going to unhide the avatar and 
well, it doesn't look much better, right? Well, let's keep going. Let's drag the frames of the clothes back to s the start of the timeline, okay? So as to make it start from zero. And then we're going to observe the whole thing from the top. And here, you can see that when you play the animation, you can clearly see that there is an inversion of the movement. That means that we're going to have to invert the cloth on the x-axis. To do that, simply select the cloth and then hit S, X, minus 1. And boom, it's fitting perfectly. Isn't that magical? So now the last step will be to make the animation loop so as to give the illusion of an endless walking cycle and to hide the glitches between the two iteration of the same cycle, okay? Remember, in Clo, we had seen an interesting loop between frames 42 and 74. So we'll now have to adapt this in Blender because in Blender we have cut the first 30 frames, remember? And we have dragged the whole set of remaining keys back to zero. So basically, what it means is that in Blender, the former frame, which was 42, is now the frame 12. And the former frame, which was 74, is now 44. And if we focus on the range between frame 12 and 44, well, it seems quite satisfactory. And I think that we can find again that loop that we had observed in Clo. Especially if you hide everything but the mesh, you can see that it works quite well. But of course, here it's more a question of taste and eye, actually. You are free to do whatever adjustment you want in this step. But as far as I'm concerned, I'll keep this range. So if you have hidden the rig, unhide it and make sure you select everything and then delete the keys you don't want. And then you just have to move again the remaining keys to make sure that once more everything starts from zero. And well, as a matter of fact, you could already export your model right there and then with the textures and all. But in my case, I'm just going to do another small adjustment. As a very last touch, I would like my avatar to look like one of those plastic mannequins in fashion stores, you know? So bear with me, I'm just going to do that. So I'm selecting the avatar, going into the materials tab and I delete everything. And I'm going to create uh, something a bit shiny, like a dark plastic. Okay, so I'm going to fool around with the roughness setting a little. Maybe a little less shiny. And once I'm happy, I select all the parts of the avatar and I hit Ctrl L. Then I select materials and boom, you can see that this little trick allows me to apply one single material to a whole bunch of objects at the same time. So once you're happy, check everything once again, one last time. And especially check that your normals are not inverted. In Blender, you have an option here that allows you to see the face orientations, okay? When it's, uh, uh, when it's red, that means that it's backwards. So uh, I'll have to flip uh, the normals so that they are all blue. That is to say that they face outwards, okay? And once everything is blue, well, you can still make a few adjustments here and there if you have some spots of red that you want to invert. But then when everything is ready, you just have to select everything again. Go back to File, Export, GLTF, GLB. And in the Export Options, click Limit to Selected Objects. And under Animation, make sure to uncheck the Group by NLA Track option so that you can actually play both animations of the cloth and the, av the avatar at the same time. So now let's dive in Minsar and make our experience, shall we? I'm going to create a new project with the horizontal surface anchor and I'm going to make it a little bit longer, a bit like a corridor along which my model can walk. Then you import your avatar and keep it fitted so that its scale is reasonable in your scene. And I'm going to put it at the beginning of uh, my surface anchor like so. Then I'm going to put two animations on it. The first one, if I'm going to actions, play animation, is actually the animation that we've just made in Blender. So have it loop to observe the walking cycle and you can see that you can actually change the speed of the animation. Like you can have it walk very fast or very slow and uh, you can even create some kind of slow motion effect, you see? But be very careful with that because if your animation is too slow, it might be easier to spot the transitions between the cycle iterations. So I'll put something not too far from one for in this case. Then I'm going to put a transform animation action 
on the model so as to give the impression that the avatar is actually walking forward. So I'm going to Actions, Transform Animation, and in Set and Key, I'm going to ask it to walk forward like so. To see the result of both animations together, you have to go in Preview Mode. And it already looks kind of great, but I'm going to adjust the speed of the transform animation just a little bit to have it slightly faster so as to counter the impression that the feet are sliding on the floor, see? Now it looks much better. Of course, in this step, you can change the size of your object, the properties of the animations. For example, here I, I made the avatar much smaller so that you can maybe put it on a table or something like that to have something like a miniature fashion show or something like that. So once you are happy with your experience, don't forget to go to project and then rename your experience so that you can find it more easily after. And then don't forget to hit done. Then you go back to main and hit share, the rocket button. Here you will be redirected uh, to the portal where under experience information, you can put a title, description if you like, the description is not mandatory at all. Then you hit publish, choose your plan and then off you go. You have a URL link, a QR code and when you click on the link or scan the QR code from your phone, you can open the experience anywhere you like.